Next class, we're going to begin by examining um, viewpoints, which are steps um, for and basic movements and ways of working that are crucial for understanding character and are used as a rehearsal tool. Uh, the viewpoints were formally organized by Anne Bogart and Tina Landau, who are both uh, directors still alive today. Uh, they were both introduced to viewpoints by another person. Anne was introduced to the viewpoints by Mary Overly, and Tina was introduced by Anne. Upon experiencing the viewpoints, they both had this uh, reaction, and I quote, Both of us went through our own process, first feeling that the world had been named, that we now had words for what we always had intuited or done. Second, becoming seduced by the system itself, its power, its effect, its style. And third, recognizing the need for re-examination and reshaping of the technique to reflect our own passions and observations. This short flipped lesson will give you an overview and context for both of these women. Um, Overly has had a long and respected career as a performer, choreographer, teacher, and theater collaborator working extensively in the U.S. and Europe. She's a founding teacher at NYU's Experimental Theater Wing and uh, was writing a book and designing a certificate program for the Six Viewpoints, um, a performance technique that she created. Uh, Anne Bogart and Tina Landau expanded those Six Viewpoints, which were primarily focused on dance, and added, uh, they expanded them to nine viewpoints. And, and I think being a director, you have to have simultaneously a huge ego and no ego. So the huge ego is the audacity to say that what delights me and tickles me will delight other people. And if I lose touch with that delight, then I am lost. And if I'm doing, making decisions for the wrong reasons, which is second guessing what either a producer or even a playwright or a, an audience is going to think, I'm, I'm, I've lost my way. Oh God forbid. Anne Bogart was born in Newport, Rhode Island into a Navy family. She moved pretty much every year. Um, but she lived the longest in Japan for you about two and a half are, years when um, she was six or seven. Every school she attended, to, to, uh, she would uh, find where theater was made. Past this is a quote future, from her. I found um, that every school was doing theater, and it was a state of, like, um, of grace for me, because it was something that repeated the pattern I was living in my life. Short, intense in experiences. You get very close um, to people, and it involves so beauty ways, and love, and then you lose them. Directing. While in high school, as back as in Rhode Island, studied, Anne got her first taste of directing and decided to make it her career. Look at things and read my, and, and a quote and again from and Bogart. Think. Somehow, at times, my I French teacher at Middletown High School introduced me to an art with a capital A when I was 15 years old, 1867 in Middletown, Rhode Island. Now, usually the plays we did in school were things like Brigadoon or Charlie's Aunt, but she decided to do The Bald Soprano by Eugene and UNESCO. As her student director, I collected props. And just like All About Eve, one day I got a phone call and my teacher said, Anne, I've got the flu. I want you to take over. Anne's teenage years were very impactful on her life. When she was 15, she saw her first Shakespeare play, Macbeth at Trinity Rep. Uh, Anne says this taught her her first lesson as a director. Quote, don't speak down to your audience. Theater is not about understanding what's going on. It's about meeting something you don't know. End quote. After high school, Anne wanted to go to an all-girls school to study theater, but she was rejected from Vassar and Sarah Lawrence and all of the other schools she applied to. She went to Briarcliff College for a few years and then wanted to transfer into a program where she would get to direct more. She applied to CalArts and Carnegie Mellon and, again, was rejected. She ended up finding a school in Athens, Greece, and she moved there to study Greek history, theater, archaeology, and explore the Greek islands. When she came back to the States, she went to Emerson in Boston for a semester and then transferred to Bard College. After finally graduating, she moved to New York City in 1974. In her attempt to follow her teacher's advice of, quote, get a company and get a writer, she placed an ad in Backstage magazine that read, quote, actors interested in an investigation of assassination and murder using Shakespeare's Macbeth, call this number. Her phone rang nonstop. In addition to trying to build a company, Bogart forged out onto the streets to try and direct in small off-Broadway theaters. When she met rejection, she turned to doing theater and found environments. Finally, after failing to get a theater for her play based on Macbeth, she resorted to using her own house. Here's how Bogart describes it. I was in despair. I didn't know what to do, and my roommate said, well, why don't you, use the th the, why don't you do theater in the house in Brooklyn? I said, well, nobody's going to come to Brooklyn, first of all, and this is a silly idea. So I kept trying to find a place to do our production, and I couldn't find one. 
Finally, I had a friend who had a truck, and she agreed to carry the audience from Manhattan to Brooklyn every night. So we put an ad in the Village Voice, and we named the play Inhabitat. The ad in the Village Voice said, meet on the corner of 3rd Street and LaGuardia if you want to see this play. People would come to 3rd Street and LaGuardia, and there'd be this truck with no windows, and they'd get in the back of it. We could take 29 people a night and carry them across the bridge to Brooklyn. They'd get out of the truck, not knowing where they were, in front of my house, and there at the top of the stairs would be Dee Dee O'Connell carrying two bags of groceries. She would say the first monologue. Her character's name was Fanny, and she later told me it was based on me, but I didn't know that at the time. Anyway, so then they would go into the house. The play would happen in all different rooms of the house, and the last scene would happen in the biggest room. Anyway, it became a cult hit. John Cage came to it, some, and somebody asked him what he thought, and he said, and he sent all kinds of people to see it. He said, oh, the sound of the dogs barking mixed with the scenes in the rooms. He gave a lot of people the idea to come and see it, and a lot of articles were written about it. So this started my career of doing site-specific work, which I did a great deal of in New York in the late 70s and 80s, not, uh, still not having a theater. Also, while in New York City, she got her graduate degree in theater history and criticism for, from NYU. This helped her to examine, quote, what we are doing instead of how we do it. Eventually, her influences grew to German film and theater techniques based on a popular German theater company called the Schauhun in the 70s and 80s. She first discovered them in a German magazine called Theater Hoyt. She became so obsessed and immersed in translating these techniques into her own work, in fact, learning German to do so, that two years after, after she started implementing these techniques in her own work, uh, this German magazine published a four-page spread on the, quote, new American work that Anne Bogart was doing. She accepted offers to direct in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, and learned the following, quote, The first play I directed in Berlin with graduating students at the Acting Academy there. It was a disaster. I was trying to pretend I was German. I refused to speak English. I tried to direct like a German director, but what it did was close me down. I gained a lot of weight, became very alcoholic, and got the thing that all Germans know, and it, it grew in my stomach. It's called angst, and it's a terrible feeling. While recovering from this disappointment, she came to realize and embrace her Americanness. She, is, she has an American sense of humor and structure, and she loves the American great, greats of theater. This realization gave her the freedom to work in any way she wanted to, and to explore American ideas, culture, phenomenon, etc. Eventually, Anne went on to co-found City Company with Tadashi Suzuki, a Japanese theater theorist. She worked at Trinity Rep and the Theater Communications Group in New York City, which she was the president of for three years. She is considered to be one of the most prominent directors currently in the American theater. I think Tina is like, like, for real, a genius. Her openness and her um, enormous uh, erudition and smarts and and uh, that reaches everywhere. And the images that she comes to rehearsal with, all the research she does, she just built the world she was trying to get to so clearly that it it seemed like a box set as far as I was concerned. What baffles me about her is that what she's able to create and mobilize does not come out of any sort of craziness. It doesn't come out of any sort of, you know, uh, egotistical manipulation. I don't feel like there's no freedom amongst us actors to contribute to the conversation. She really uh, lays everyone um, puts everyone to a certain level that we're, we're all collaborators on this project. She takes whatever you're bringing to the table. She'll say that, um, you know, she considers herself a kind of an editor in some ways and that you should bring her material and then she can say, that's great, that we don't need, let's use this, that, da 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 da. It, it, she doesn't control, she creates a, a very loving, free, safe, work environment. You feel like you're helping to create the piece. It's a lot more fun to do than if a director sort of spoon feeds you stuff. You hear these horror stories about, yeah, so-and-so's great, she's brilliant, but she's not a very nice person, or do you know what I mean? 
Tina is is amazing and yet she's able to create an environment where everybody can be amazing. Sorry, I mean it's just she's so creative, she's so incredibly intelligent, hardworking, um, and uh, just inspiring. Tina Landau is an American playwright and theater director. She's known for her large-scale musical and ensemble-driven work. Her productions have appeared on Broadway, off-Broadway, and regionally, but most extensively at the Steppenwolf Theater Company in Chicago, where she is an ensemble member. Landau was born in New York City to film and television producer parents. She moved with her family to Beverly Hills, California, where she graduated from Beverly Hills High School before attending Yale University. At Yale, she directed numerous productions as an undergraduate, she later attended the American Repertory Theater Institute for Advanced Theater Training at Harvard University. Landau's early work included site-specific productions with New York City's on-guard arts, including Orestes and the Trojan Women, a love story, both by Charles L. Mead, as well as her original play Stonewall, Night Variations. Floyd Collins, a musical by Adam Gettle, features a book by Landau. It opened off-Broadway at Playwrights Horizons in 1996. Landau was nominated for the Drama Desk Award for Outstanding Book of a Musical and the Drama Desk Award for Outstanding Director of a Musical, and the production won the Lucille Lordle Award for Best Musical. A later version of the show played at San Diego's Old Globe Theater, the Goodman Theater in Chicago, and the Prince Music Theater in Philadelphia. Uh, it recently played in D.C. at first stage. In 1997, Tina Landau became a member of the Steppenwolf Theater Company, where she has directed numerous productions, including The Wheel with Joan Allen, The Hot L Baltimore, and the brother-sister plays, and Head of Passes. She's also directed The Tempest, Time of Your Life, which later moved to Seattle Rep and ACT, The Diary of Anne Frank, The Cherry Orchard, and many, many other plays. Landau made her Broadway debut directing the 2001 revival of Bells Are Ringing with Faith Prince. In 2009, she returned to Broadway with uh, the Steppenwolf production of Tracy Letts' Superior Donuts. Other New York City directing credits include Old Hats, um, Paula Vogt, well, cares about that. Tina met Anne Bogart as an actor in Anne's American Vaudeville at the Houston Alley Theater. Here's a clip of one of her recent productions at Steppenwolf, The Brother Sister Plays.